Rafael Nadal de Sun. Play. That was what I was talking about, Mark. Thanks, Rafa, for making me look good. Uh, I mean, that's where he finds his forehand on that due side of the court. He can hold the ball a little bit. You saw Medvedev forced to cover the inside out because that's probably his favorite spot, but he has the capability of playing that anywhere, as we saw there, going back inside in. the second time we've seen a very short forehand I think that last one was a little bit of a miss hit but do you think that was a definite play yeah well I was thinking the exact same thing Pet you were in my head there because uh, that is the second time we've seen that he play, played the first one in the in the first game I mean it, I wasn't sure if he was trying to play it short or he was trying to play it with more of an angle but both those points drew Medvedev up into the court where he almost had to let go with one hand and kind of like just block the ball back and play That's always an interesting aspect of watching Daniel Medvedev play, who we've talked about earlier in commentary and some of his other matches, actually moving to his right there to find a backhand and then, and then playing basically what's an inside-out backhand. Not the most common shot you see on tour. Let's listen. Yep, Rafa's used his forehand 62% of the time in a rally situation in this tournament. Medvedev used his forehand just 47% of the time. It's a game changer. Yeah, absolutely. that deep position he does make a very swift transition to get up on the baseline doesn't he yeah absolutely he he took space right away there and then not only that but he was changing direction on every ball in this rally
Put on your seatbelt. You're going to see a lot of that, I think. Intense extended rallies. Medvedev just trying to add a little extra something to that last backhand. The thing I love about Medvedev is he never turns his back. Look at this picture. How often he just walks backwards, eyes on the opponent all the time, hunting them down. showed you on the Hawkeye at the start of the match that that is where he gets a lot of his success into the forehand on the ad side and it closes out the game. Look at this big differential as well, Brad, for Nadal on his serve. Massive, massive uptick in terms of pace and also shortening points. Doesn't have to play as many points with the unreturned numbers. Yeah, well, it's, it's just one of the many aspects as we look at the, the win predictor. I've been wanting to see this. 64% for Medvedev, so a little bit higher than where uh, Fitz and I were both at on the win predictor, but I would still, uh, I don't know, I would, I would argue that a little bit. But no, as we were saying, I mean, I, I think it's one of the things that's kind of, you know, we've talked about it a lot. Carlos Moya put some time and effort in with Rafa to make some adjustments in the serve. He's a little bit more upright now. He gets a little bit better turn, and, and he's gotten more pop on the ball, and that translates to both first and second serves. I thought it was interesting that he chose to serve first in an era yeah, where yeah, yeah. it's Man, become yeah, pretty yeah. common for guys to choose to return first. A little bit of a statement of his, of his confidence going into the match right away. A, a slight phenomenon to me is is that whenever I've watched Rafa over the years, when they're in a baseline rally with with the opposite, when he is with the opposition, you always think he's favourite. I just I'm just not sure tonight whether he is. Ow. Which which is sort of a foreign feeling to me, you know, with his spin and his margin for error sure. and how he uh, makes opposition move and and laterally get outside the, the tram lines to get his spin uh, angled forehand back. Tonight, Medvedev, he looks so relaxed back there to me. Out. Yeah, I don't disagree with you, Fitz. I think it's uh, both of these guys, when they miss from the back, when they miss like Medvedev just did, I think you're surprised. So unless they're forced into an air, Like there, Rafa trying so hard to find a forehand that he actually puts himself in probably a little bit of a bad position from there. He has become so good on the hard courts as well, the Russian. 20 wins out of his last 24 against the top 10 on this surface. Quarterfinals and 16 out of his last 20 major hardcore tournaments as well. If you include the Grand Slams, Masters 1000, and year end champs, he has been incredibly hard to dislodge from a draw on a hardcore. 29th major final for Nadal out of 63 career Grand Slams yes. played. Thank you. It's a decent percentage. Same as Novak. 46% Novak, who has made 31 major finals out of 66 career Grand Slams played. It's incredible. Yeah, those are incredible stats. Just... 
Love 15. Interested to see when and if we see some serve and volleys from both these two players tonight as well, trying to counter the deep position. That was a big move forward there from Medvedev. Yeah, he was actually taking that ball early. I didn't know he knew how to spell early on the return. What an enchanting night here in Melbourne. It promises to be. And yeah, we've seen a number of little nuances that are pretty interesting right now. Rafa, Rafa in the first game really didn't use the slice backhand at all. And then in that uh, in that return game, he he sliced quite a lot. And obviously by choice, he, that he wasn't forced into slices. He was using the slice. He started the first point of this game using it a little bit again and ended up getting in trouble. And then that last point, man, Medvedev took three or four backhands as early as I've ever seen him. Bones. Medvedev going with the, I call it the Russian play, honestly. It started with the Russians. You take this short ball through the middle of the court and you drive it through the middle. Rafa stayed home a little bit, just enough, and was there to make that little shot. That's a massive point, the difference between Love 40 and 1530 here. But did anyone notice what happened before that play? I mean, Medvedev looks dangerous to me from the back here. Wow. <laughs> Mayhem in Melbourne, and it's only the third game. Rafa just didn't do enough with that first volley. I thought he was going to get beat for sure. But the hands, the athleticism. Brad, I know it's spectacular, but is, the question I have is this type of stuff from Rafa, sustainable. He looked, he looked to the edge of the court then with a worried look on his face, even though he's come up with two spectacular points. Medvedev making him play that well in the early stages. sure about the slice tactic I'm, I'm not loving it one it's not really doing a lot of damage with Daniel and two uh, I think he's he's not falling into his rhythm with his backhand as much as he normally would if he was hitting it o over it on a more consistent basis 
A real test of the Spaniard serve. Fits. I mean, he's being pushed right here in this game early, but you also Jeez. need a foil to push yourself, to make yourself find better aspects of your game, better performance. Fitz is asking a good question, though. Can he maintain it? If Medvedev maintains this kind of a level consistently, he's going to have him under pressure a lot. And, and Brad... Rafa is working hard here. He's sweating like a bull. I know he is one. Maybe sweating like a horse is a better analogy. It's everywhere, and that's why the ball uh, person has come out to clean the court. He's working super hard here. Medvedev, yeah, he's sweating, just not as much. I think Rafa wanted to go to his towel, but he hasn't got time. Clock ticking, and he wanted time to compose himself at the baseline. Second chance to break for Medvedev. percent of his serves down the tee on the outside Jeez. of the first serve have not come back in their previous meetings and he's drilled a good one there you know as we saw with Berrettini in the semi-finals I think it takes a, a, a little while even though these guys have played a lot of left-handers they play many many more right-handers takes a little while to get used to this left-handed uh, angle on the serve I think That slice I like better. He sliced that short on purpose. Just to uh, highlight what Brad was saying about the slice, that one worked nicely, but you can see it's a definite tactic that he's brought to this final. 55% of his backhand's being sliced at the moment. game. 2-1 Nadal. I'm not entirely sure what he was asking for. Was that sawdust? I sawdust. think maybe sawdust yeah, for the sweat. He's going to the old uh, Ivan Lendl, back to the old days. I'm sure Fitzy had a bit of sawdust in his time. Fitzy has sawdust someplace, but I'm not <laughs> sure it's in his pockets. 
I'll be kind now, you gentlemen. Sorry, sorry, Fitz. Sorry. Uh, I, I, I got to say, if if you're a Rafa fan, I think right now you can't help but be a little bit nervous. Um, who knows in this two-horse race? None of us. I tell do. you what, Fitz, you're adding to their nerves. <laughs> well, well, I, he worked hard there, and what what I worry oh. about a little bit is that. Rafa's strength, the forehand going out wide to the backhand, is not necessarily the best matchup. There is the Rafa team present. His dad, his agent, Benito, his uh, PR, Carlos Meyer, Mark Lopez, of course, who's been added to the team. Francisco Roy, who's back at the academy, still working with them at some stages, I believe. And Rafael Mamo his physio that has uh, been very busy for the last six months and throughout the course of Nadal's team. Since As for the years, Russian, he's kept it pretty simple. Jill Savara, Oliver Van Lindo, and that is that. Much has been made of Rafa's last five losses here in Melbourne. He's lost at night the last five times, lost in 2017 to Fed in the final Chilich quarters, 2018 Novak 2019 demolition job. Team in the quarters, 2020, sits a pass from two sets to love up last year in the quarters. As we see another long extended complicated rally and we went and took a deep dive there doesn't seem to be an awful lot in it in terms of the conditions quality of opponent the biggest thing there and maybe Rafa in an ideal world right now would like it to get a bit cooler given how much he is perspiring For me, this is this is the concern: is that in the last service game, Rafa had to work hard in both first and second service game. Daniel Medvedev comes over and just rolls through his last service game, and now again, getting a little lead here. I think Rafa needs to direct a little more traffic to Medvedev's forehand because his backhand is awesome. Uh, I'm not sure if you can say it's as good as Novak's, but goodness me, it is good. And he's hurting Rafa with his backhand. The, the spinning forehand out to his backhand, I'm not sure that's always the play. Fitz, I agree with you, and especially when he gets it from the deuce side, he, he's, he's chosen a number of times to pull the forehand back inside in to the backhand side. I think he's got to use the forehand to the offside a little bit more to open the backhand up. Uh, yes, and, and I think the backhand of Medvedev is certainly better. It goes through the court a lot more. So, so the, his forehand will sit up a little bit more and less likely, I think, to hurt Rafa. Whereas his backhand, he hits it so hard, so flat, and it shoots through the court. So, just a thought. Eight shots, average rally length in this match already. It was uh, respectively four and six coming into this semi-final. The very best bringing the very best out of each other. close.
It's gorgeous. So calm, so composed. Love 15. Unbelievable job with his hands there to get that ball up and down off the two-hander. Just felt as though Rafa got himself completely in the wrong place. It was almost as though he didn't even feel as though he was going to pull that cross court. That didn't look a long way away from him. No, it was. He, he looked so off balance here. I'm not sure what happened exactly. It, it didn't seem like it was that far from him. He, he kind of, I don't know, his movement out of the volley looked a little bit awkward, and I'm not sure what was going on there. It seemed seemed strange. Don't feel like he should have gotten beaten on that passing shot. So in this game, Rafa hit a drop shot on the first point, which is not his normal play. Then he came into the net, which is not always his normal play. And I think right now he feels, and maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like he feels he's got to do something a bit different than he normally does to win these points, which, you know, if he's in at the net, like when he got past there, if he's in there against... Medvedev's passing shot. That's not a good matchup all the time. He has to only come into the net when he can hit that beautiful touch drop volley. He doesn't want to be in a negative position up there. So the matchup not so good when that happens. Pretty simple break in the end, and it's delight for Daniel. 3 2. Well, Fitzy's been warning us for the opening five games really that this was looking very comfortable in terms of a matchup for Medvedev, and so it proved there, Brad. Yeah, I mean, I think Fitz is uh, he's not wrong. Yeah, and he hasn't been wrong. I mean, Medvedev has been making him work very hard on his service games every single time. Down love 30 in the previous game, love 30, then love 40 here. And uh, pretty basic break there in the end from Medvedev. Hate to admit it when Fitzy's right. What an Australian Open it's been. So many wonderful stories, not just on the singles, but of course on the doubles court as well for the home nation with Kyrgios and Kokonakis winning. But Ash Barty's night last night, it was special to be here and it will be one that remains in the memory banks for everybody. A lifetime achievement. And one of the few players that has managed to win on three different surfaces as well. Dull, of course, another one of those. Medvedev yet to master the clay courts, although a nice quarter-final run at Roland Garros suggested that he can be great on that too. Right now, he is very much in the ascendancy in this Melbourne final.
others who have managed to win on three surfaces. Serena Williams, Roger Federer and Novak Djokovic, along with Ash Barty and Rafa Nadal. said I think he's got to use that play if he keeps looping the ball across court from Medvedev's backhand it just doesn't phase him one iota Medvedev he's so comfortable with that play that off forehand different story I tell you one thing we're seeing from up here Fitz is that Daniel Medvedev is absolutely patrolling the baseline At that point, he was pushed a little bit deeper off the second ball as he was looking to, to defend a little bit. But in that first point, he is standing up with his toes almost on the baseline, taking the ball very early and just driving it at Rafa, taking his time away both with the pace and how early he's taking the ball. And that's one aspect that we didn't really talk about that much, but... Definite advantage for Daniel Medvedev is uh, his serve has been so effective throughout the tournament. Out. 14 15. That forehand that time right out of the middle of the court. 40, 30. Rafa just creating angle out of this ball. There's no angle to work with there, but. Very assured in his fourth major final, isn't he, Daniel Medvedev? Fourth major final brings him level with the likes of Dominic Team and Stan Wawrinka, of course, who has managed to win three majors. Swiss star, hopefully back in March. It'll be good to see him back on the courts. Definitely having to work hard. He's definitely having to try and think his way around. And not only has Medvedev been more consistent, he's also been more powerful as well. He's added a six gaze to his backhand from the previous rounds that he's played here in Melbourne. Special performance at the moment unfolding here from the Russian.
I talked about how important it was for Rafa to go to Abu Dhabi, he said after Washington, where he went home, was injured, went to Toronto, actually, Rafa. Didn't play, went back to Spain. He said it was important to go to Abu Dhabi just purely because he said Rafa didn't feel like a tennis player at that stage. He's everywhere, the Russian. He's running right out here at the moment. This is uh, this is becoming domination from Daniel Medvedev, and, and that point Love again, Fitzy. Those first three forehands from the offside from Rafa. He chose to play the first three of them inside in to the backhand side, and I completely agree with you. For me, tactically, I think that's a little bit of a mistake. It's becoming too predictable as well. Just misses its target as Medvedev hones in on his, which is the opening set. Double break to the good, 5-2. Just going back to that point I was making, he went to Toronto, went back, he just said he just didn't feel, he said, sometimes you've got to get these athletes back in just to the competition to make them feel as though, you know, that they can overcome the injury, which obviously he's had since the start of his career. And he said that was the big sort of uplift. But as we're seeing right now, there seems to be a, a, a pretty big gulf between him and Daniel Medvedev. Is it a gulf that can be bridged tonight, do you think, Brad? If he can change his tactics? I mean, we've talked about it all throughout the tournament. You know, three out of five said tennis. There's there's peaks and valleys normally. We'll, we'll see what happens here if uh, if Rafa can make a few adjustments, if Medvedev's game drops off a little bit, and he's certainly come out in this uh, in this first set, Medvedev, uh, and has landed every punch that he's thrown. Excuse me. Excuse me. The rubbish, please. I need the rubbish. He's in a tough spot right now. He is in a tough spot, Pitch, very much so. He it, you know, it looks like his ball can't hurt Daniel. I, I mean, it's a bizarre thought process for me because we've seen him for two decades have people on the back for it. He hits his ball with such heaviness and such spin. It's like a Super Bowl coming off the surface and bouncing with heaviness. But, but here Medvedev is so deep, it's sort of negating that. And his speed around the court uh, as well. It, it, it seems to me Rafa's not hurting him from the back of the court. He looks so comfortable. I, I just, it's hard to believe, but, but it's happening. Four titles last year for Medvedev, Marseille, Mallorca, Canada, and the US Open. Of course, the big one prior to that was the ATP Finals back in 2020. It also picked up the Masters 1000 in Paris just prior to that. Been a, a lovely run for the Russian. Bolts. Kind of came out of nowhere. That had a bit to do with the new balls. I mean, I mean Medvedev struggled to time the ball on the on the shot before that Rafa forehand, and then it, it flew off the racket. The, the ball skidded through a bit more, and Rafa got away with timing it pretty darn well off that skidding ball. But the new balls generally will help Medvedev when he's serving, no doubt. The, the ball goes through considerably quicker off the court.
Ruff has set that point up nicely, but just not able to execute. Well, he didn't open the face enough there on that backhand volley, did he? I think he's generally used to balls coming at him with a bit of spin, top spin, and you don't have to aim quite as high off the racket face with that. That time he, he had to open that face more and didn't. This has been clinical, really. Relentless from the Russian. 6-2 opening set in this year's Australian Open men's final. Well, the stats will tell you the story, but I have to say it's more about the feeling. The feeling at the moment is a little bit reminiscent of the 2019 final here when he played Nova. talking about whether he's got enough in the tank as well uh, this will be another bit of a problem for him because he is having to work so much harder you can see how much good work his first serve has done for him in terms of just reducing the workload in the previous rounds Medvedev just making him work every single time the accumulative effect will hurt the Spaniard Bolt. yeah both fatigue and also that sense of pressure just keeping the pressure building and building and building through that last set in every single return game, Daniel Medvedev. That's a much better pattern for me. First ball to the offside, open the court, make him run back to the backhand. He hasn't won a lot of easy points off of serve. He's got to find a way to start making that work a little bit better if he's going to have a chance. That was the length of the start of that rally from Medvedev. I mean, no chance you can hurt him from where he was keeping Nadal. 13-15. Pitch, he's a genius at that. Even when he mishits the ball, he, he knows how deep it's going. It's quite extraordinary. It's a battle of wits out there. Neither are unarmed. 14-15. A rare ball dropping inside the service line for Nadal to latch onto. And there you can 
can see the depth of shot from Medvedev, substantially better than the Spaniard. How does Nadal counter that? Bounce. Part of the reason for that depth, of course, is the flat trajectory of Medvedev. The spin from Nadal plays with more safety, creates more margin for error, but it tends to drop short a little more often. You know it's going to provoke a reaction from this great champion in terms of trying to salvage the situation. Some more proactive court positioning from the Spaniard helped him get through that opening service game of the second set. The win predictor was always going to have a field day with that opening set. Yeah, absolutely. From where we started, from where we started from. Seventeen years of thrilling his fans on the main tour. Fitzy heard just heard Fitzy talk about the flatter hits just to give you a little illustration and they are substantial differences. They are two very different styles of players out here as you can see. Medvedev a lot flatter, a lot longer with the ball strike. Too many slices for me. Fitz, I don't know how you feel about it, but I just think that's too many balls to slice. I'm okay with the slice. Occasionally change the rhythm, change the pace, but that's too many. Well, he's, I guess he's using it to try and get a different reply from Edward, hoping for something a bit shorter that he can unload on. I mean, because he has to unload here, I think, to, to make any impression. Those couple are different. He's he's on a greater degree of defense. They're basically forced to slice off of those. But the ones where he's had an opportunity to to be able to step in and hit the backhand, I think he has to take that more often. Fourteen fifteen. Well, his height helps him for a number of reasons. Not his fastest of the tournament, but uh, it suffocates the bounce a little bit off the ground strokes from Rafa. He's able to take it on the way up, and it also obviously allows him access to that wide serve on the ad side. This time also on the juice. You know, I, I think it's a rare occasion when you look at two players that includes Rafa Nadal on a tennis court, and you say that his forehand is not the most effective ground stroke on the court. It has been that way for so often against most of his opposition. 
but tonight from what I've seen so far the best effective shot on this court so far is the Medvedev backhand thank you the two-hander it looks it almost infallible it, he rarely misses it he can hit it down the line across court he can generate extra speed with it somehow Rafa might have to just direct more traffic to the Medvedev forehand It's not, uh, that's exactly what you're talking about and what I was saying as well. And when he takes the backhand cross court there, early on in that rally again, he chose to play down the line with his backhand back to the Medvedev backhand. It just makes more sense for him when he's sitting on the ball and has his feet underneath him to take the backhand cross court with some aggression, open the court up. I think he has to use that play more, absolutely. Rafa stood on that one with some serious aggression cross court that time. He just looks so comfortable, doesn't he, in terms of just dealing with whatever Rafa's throwing at him at the moment. It was a decent slice down the line. He coaxed it back up the line to the Spaniard, and it was just no danger to him. Yeah, I didn't... Uh, I agree with you, Petch. Medvedev looks so comfortable just ranging around the baseline right now. But I didn't mind that pattern from Rafa. I kind of like that pattern from Rafa. He just... You got to miss that last ball inside the line instead of just a little bit outside. He was doing a little bit better job of dictating during that point. A rare free point. At that 30 all. Needs some more of those as well. Yeah, and I think he's got to serve more to the point. It's it, it, it's not his stock standard usually, but but increase the the amount of times, the percentage of times that he goes to the forehand, surely, on the first serve especially.
wins at the moment for Nadal on serve, but a valuable one. 2 1, second set. Nadal wins two games to one. We need to suffer, or it will be something that he will tell himself, and we will need to find solutions. Can he find them out there on his own at the moment? Is very many fans in tonight will be hoping so he has done in the past hasn't always done here at Melbourne talking about his first serve direction from Fitzy there you can see where he's been serving more on the advantage side to the to the foreigner could change that up on the juice Brad yeah I think I, he just has to be a little bit less predictable to keep a little bit of balance a little bit. And don't forget to Well, it's been an opening hour that has been very much to the Russians' advantage at the moment. He's got that a little too laid out, hasn't he? The ice tower's literally called time, John Blom. You know, that stat to the first court for me is really important. I think he's got to take more risk with that serve. His left-handed serve to the first court out to the forehand. He's not getting enough free points off his serve. Medvedev is, and you'd expect him to with that big bomb of his, but Rafa needs a few extra ones to help him here, I think. Yep, there Look at that. Fitzy. Yep, 78%. To the back end, too much on that first court. Thank you. Players are ready. Thank you. Seats, please. This feels like a chance. Love 15, second serve. Out. Definitely feels like a chance now. One of the things that just creeped into my head was, was the thought that... Uh, one of the things that hurt Medvedev, or that he hurt himself with, really, against Ogier Aliassime and against Tsitsipas was double faults. But you have to put pressure on him. Disappointed that he didn't make Medvedev play another ground stroke there at Love 30. He was there in good time, the Spaniard, to hit that forehand. Bolts.
The 40th shot of that rally was out of this world. 15, 14. Unexpected. Unbelievable. An angle from that position. Medvedev had no chance to get to that ball. And this stadium's come alive now too. What a shot. Is where he's had his most success against Nadal in the past. Down the tee, on the juice, out wide, on the ad. Will he go out wide here? He's gone with his patterns with the first break point. How quickly things can change in a tennis match. How beautifully unexpected. I mean, that 40-shot rally ignited the crowd. Well, I think it was always going to take something special because it, he's, he's not winning enough points his normal way, is he, Rafa? He's, he's having to come up with something pretty special. And I just had the feeling that when he got to the 1540, he really did need to break there. If he, if he hadn't have broken there, it would have been a real downer for him. So he's, now he's in it, certainly in this set. Hitting the backhand cross court has made an enormous difference in the last four or five, five or six points. And also the balance, much better balance now of two handed backhands to the one handed slice. Using the slice to just change the rhythm is very effective, but slicing three, four, five, six times in a row, I just don't see the purpose in that. If he hits that second serve to the back end, there is no free point. It won't, he, he probably won't get too many off a second serve to the forehand, but at least he got one there, and it makes a difference. More first serves out wide to this first court, though. Took one luminous bit of skill, uh, and the stars going to align tonight for the Spaniard. He is up 4 1, second set. Sparingly used the serve and volley, but it was there for him when he needed it to close out that game. And what a difference, just one point. In fact, one shot makes.
We talked about this the other day. You know how the majority of points in men's tennis are under four shots, but it's those rallies that are extended that go. We talk about beyond nine balls. That ball was that, that rally was 40 balls, and to finish it the way that Rafa did, that's just a backbreaker. It's a mind twister for Medvedev. And we've seen since that point. Rafa has picked up his game and, and I feel like Medvedev has also dropped off just a tiny bit. Time. Well he's been a little more proactive in this second set a few more little wrinkles thrown in from Nadal. And as ever, an unpredictable outcome is not an argument for inaction, and he is finding those solutions he was desperate to at the start of the second set. And really, it was the perfect 60 minutes for the Russian, but it's been an ideal 10 for Rafa. You break this man, sir, but you can never break his spirit. Expect a response from Medvedev, though. He's more than a match in that department. Let's listen. And how much does the scoreboard here, Brad, alter the terms of engagement for these two players? I mean, I, I don't think enormously, to be honest with you, at this point. You know, when you look at the scoreboard sometimes, 4-1 is a misleading score. Medvedev knows he's only down one break. I mean, he, his focus right now is getting through this game, getting a good hold. Allows Rafa a little freedom. Out. A little freedom, and I mean, we've seen Rafa Four, already two, through the course of relatively short period of time in, in this match that he's made some tactical adjustments. I mean, he's, he's learning out there on the fly a little bit. Game, Medvedev. Yeah. That leads four games to two. I mean, I think it was a combination of both the incredible level that Medvedev was playing at in the first set and, and some questionable tactics from Rafa coming out. The, the, the slices down the line to the backhand, the inside in forehand to the backhand. Almost as if he was trying to play the Medvedev backhand like it was the weaker side. When we all really know that it's not the weaker side. It's the, it's the side that Medvedev would be preferring to hit as we know he does. Out. Love 15. Yeah, I think his mindset was to hook that forehand of his across court to the Medvedev backhand. That, that's the inside in you talk about, Brad. And he got the ball out with a lot of angle in the very first game of the match. And maybe he just thought he'd stick with that tactic, but he, he wasn't having the same penetration with that forehand the longer that first set and the beginning of the second set went on. So he has to unload more off, I think, Bolts. with that forehand away to the Medvedev's forehand. And use the backhand out there too, across court as you're talking about. Yeah, that's the ball, isn't it, Brad? We're, I think we're both talking about that. There was no need for him to go down the line with that backhand of his Love because it's straight into the the strength of Medvedev, and it cost him the point, really. Well, I think Medvedev's, he's reading that 
he takes that backhand line. Medvedev plays cross court. He knows the forehand is coming cross court, and then he sits on that ball if it comes up short at all. And with his height, as we talked about, and his backhand, he's comfortable to drive that down the line. Oh. What a second serve. That ball had so much movement on it. I mean, can we go back and... I'd love to see where that serve crossed the baseline. Let's see this. And that's the other side of the hash mark. That was good from Medvedev. The use of the middle of the court there to defend the angles was magnificent. And Pets, let, let's give the coach some more credit, can we? On air? I mean, that worked out exactly how Brad had explained it. He, the rally evolved. Rafa finally goes down into the Medvedev backhand with not enough on it. And from there on in, he's in trouble. Uh, that backhand across court is devastating from Medvedev. In that last rally, Fitz, I loved the, the three offside forehands, but then it, it, Rafa kind of had a let off on that backhand. Out. That was a brilliant returning game. Absolutely exceptional from Medvedev. A bullet of a forehand off the chip from Nadal, and he's back on serve in the second, the Russian. He is a mesmerizing player to watch. He is, absolutely. I, I, I don't disagree, but I, I'm, I'm still a little... I don't understand the use of the slice here on the serve and your first shot. And your first shot is, is a ball that you're two meters, a meter and a half inside the baseline to hit. And you and you opt to go with a slice backhand from that position when you're Rafa Nadal. I just hard for me to question a guy with 20 Grand Slam titles to his name, but I just question that specific play tactically. What a beautiful evening it is in Melbourne. Our last night here. Time. Stunning evening as we get to that golden hour, the fire and embers of the day here. A beautiful day. And one of the great champions of the past, raging at the dying of the light as well, trying to keep the memories alive. And it seemed at 4-1 that he was going to be able to achieve that, but Medvedev has designs on this second set now. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Players are waiting for you. Players are ready. Thank you. Centimeters. 
I think if that ball doesn't touch the top of the tape, it's a winner. If not a winner, it certainly gains an advantage in the point. First one of the night. 15. Surprising time. 15 love. But that was kind of the same as what we saw the other night with the, the deceleration on that one. Oh. Let's second. Kind of came in pairs as well, didn't they, from the other night as well? They so did, and and, it, and inexplicably, because he had been serving so well, just like he has here prior to that, didn't seem like there was any issue whatsoever. The lethal loveliness of that four had not lost on anyone within this stadium. Crucial stages of this second set. And Rafa took the handbrake off. How much did that last slice from Nadal clear the net by? The crowd, the crowd gave out a sound as if it was millimeters over the net. It hovered. That's all I'll say. I'm not sure how close, but it was, it was a hovercraft coming over there, and it stayed really low. Please, please. isn't just living every point, it's living every shot. Well, that was a little stroke of Rafa's genius there, a perfect time, wasn't it? No one in the stadium was expecting that. Perfectly executed drop shot out of nowhere. It's what it takes. He almost had a standing eight count. I mean, after that first set, would you have bet a nickel that there were going to be two breaks from Rafa in this set? They have nickels here in Australia. You know what a nickel is? They have five cent pieces here. <laughs> That is a shocker from Rafa. Well, it's a rare occurrence, isn't it? His overhead is so safe. Uh, uh, 
a strange thing. Tried to hit it on a dime, Bradley. That's what he tried to do, not a nickel. <laughs> Unusual. set the tone, hasn't it? The overhead, he was worried about taking it into the space across court because he was going to be exposed himself if Medvedev was there. Well, they've both had some down moments in these two games. Medvedev really played a poor game by his serving standards in the, in the previous one and it contributed to losing his serve. Rafa now doing the same thing. from Medvedev may have just illuminated the escape light for Nadal to get out of this trouble that he's put himself in here. who seems to be more relentless than time comes up with the goods 15, really comes 15. up with the good looks how he look at how he keeps closing off that backhand volley that's one of the best volleys I've ever seen Daniel Medvedev hit great movement through that ball Backhand volley from Rafa to come back. Smart tennis. What can Nadal conjure up here? Some gutsy tennis right there. Cheers. Are these two guys magnificent competitors or what?
must have taken just a couple of millimeters of the line on the way through. You can understand it was going so fast that Nadal might have looked at it and thought it was wide, but three millimeters in. What a shot from Medvedev. Amazing. Rafa obviously looking at a mark that's 99% out. Last three first serves, he's followed in. Oh. Yeah, so you're aware, guys. An invasion. Yeah, and I don't think that's gone particularly well. Rafa's all safe, he's very OK. Security have done a great job. Wouldn't surprise me if he hurt himself, that guy. Yeah. He, he's not using his legs too well right now. Great job. Great job by the security here. And it's interrupted a break point, guys. We're gonna, we've got to concentrate on that, don't we? Yeah, couldn't have come at a more inopportune moment. But Yeah, I don't think that was a coincidence, was it? Yeah. Thank you. Unfortunate but brilliantly handled by the security here at the Australian Open. One of the most exquisite and extravagant shots you will see break point down in a final of a Grand Slam. Cheers. That was a work of art. Conceived on the practice courts of Mallorca, made in Melbourne. He's missed it. And, and it is a massive miss. He had an open court. He took his time and just mishit it, I think, a little bit. He could have hit that eight feet inside the baseline. Yep. That, and, it, that, and it was going to be a winner. That's right, Brad. Now, that, that could have an, an incredibly important effect on the outcome of this set. This game is why I'm so reluctant to change to a no-ad scoring at times. The pendulum swings one way, then the other. The pressure and opportunity. Nadal still within touching distance of grabbing this second set. Let's... He's trying for you, Fitz. He's trying. He keeps trying to go out to the forehand side, but every time he's gone there, he's either missed it by a whisker or it's a let.
And that's a great pattern. That's what you were calling for, Fitzy. Serving more to that forehand on the on the uh, deuce uh, side of the court. You can be Brad Swingman anytime on the coaching scene. We could do a pretty good job together. Set point. Bounce. Such composure from Everett. He's certainly in the zone, Medvedev. Down set point. His facial expression didn't change at all. He is really in the zone in terms of concentration here. Whether he wins or loses this set, he, he's going to remain the same. He, he's here for the long haul. Getting a full set in this one game. Medvedev's eyes have not left Nadal. Perseverance pays off for the Russian. He breaks back. 5 4 Nadal. And the smash at the end of the day ended up being so costly. You, for, you have to go back, you forget about that opening point. Pretty easy smash from Rafa that he missed to open the game. First point so big just for creating some momentum, getting a little bit of separation right away. Jill Savara will be hoping his man can turn around this deficit, take a two sets to love lead, and put him in very much pole position to win his second major. improved as much as his talent has over the last couple of years Medvedev a moody complexity at times from the Russian but serenity right now as we take our last looks around Melbourne Park for another year another fabulous 14 days here at the Australian Open Still a few unwritten chapters as well by these two champions. Players are ready, thank you. Settle down quickly, please. Bolts!
15 love. How much wind did that take out of Nadal's sails that he wasn't able to close out that second set? Bolts. Especially, Mark, if this is a quick game. And a couple of quick unforced errors. From those two points, you'd say it took a lot of the wind out of his sails. things I appreciate about the way Medvedev plays this game that is not his comfort zone but he always throws in something a little different at times against these great players to give them something else to guard against he's a constant thinker you've pointed out Mark how he, he never takes his eyes off of his opponent I mean for me I think that's it's like a it's like a poker player Looking for a little tell, looking to see if uh, if the other guy on the other side of the net is uh, breathing a little bit harder or. Wow, great play from Rafa. But he's, he keeps an eye on him, looking for any sign of weakness. Fifteen. Top tip, if you're ever in the bush, Brad, and you come face to face with a lion, do not turn your back. Walk backwards, stare it down. They're looking for weakness. Never run from a predator. What a countering shot off that approach from Medvedev. Rafa was in such an advantageous position coming forward. He ended up having to hit a little chip backhand out of the middle of the court and retreat back to the baseline. That squash shot right there. Crazy. Just got a little bit lucky there, Rafa. He may have tried to hit that as short as it it actually went, but I'm not sure. He, he mishit it. 
It dropped short. He might have just been trying to push it a bit further down the line, but it was advantageous when it dropped short, that's for sure. He'll take it. There's no doubt about it. I think he was trying to play that short fits. I'm not sure he was trying to play it that short. Worked out perfectly. See, the backhand's showing some signs of weakening a little bit, isn't it? He's missed several easy ones in the last couple of games on big points. Lack of acceleration on that ball, given the time that he had on it also. I mean, that ball was sitting there. It almost had a big sign on it that said, hit me. And he, and he really didn't get after that. a rare gift from Medvedev. He's actually he's probably not the guy I want to spend Christmas with. I don't feel like he gives great gifts. <laughs> he is the gift, Brad. <laughs> You're the gift, Fitz. Oh. Hit on. Just Jeez. misread the ball completely, and the timing was totally off. Yeah, we've seen it a couple of times this tournament when he starts taking one ball as well, when he gets completely drenched in sweat, and that's the situation he finds himself in at the moment. And did that contribute to the miss as well? Swimming upstream here in adult. Not an easy play at that score line. The way he had to stop and pull up. I'll tell you one thing, Brad, that was a much harder smash than the one he hit in the net two yeah. games ago. Way Absolutely. Harder. <laughs> So much of his career, he has forced his opponents to <coughs> and extracted perfection from them. He is unable to deliver that himself at the moment. Medvedev pressing here for a break late on in the second.
backhand finding the mark that time. It, it's amazing to me uh, over the course of the last number of points how he's he's mishit a couple of really bad forehands and then has the courage to step up and crack that ball. The confidence, the self-belief. And the absence of alternatives as well. <laughs> Magnificent hold. 6 5, second set. He found a way. It looked a little unlikely. How's the atmosphere, Fitz? It's awesome. I, I, I just love it. it. It raises your heart rate, makes you think why. Live sport is so fabulous, and I, I know I'm biased towards this sport pitch, but uh, this is as good as it gets for me. I tell you what, he, he, it was a must-win game, wasn't it? I mean, Rafa just hanging on here, really. I mean, he's, he's not far away, but he had to hold that game, as he has several of his service games in this, in this set. Fits as much as you said early on how important the first set was. This second set is almost an absolute must win for Rafa. There's the roar, the roar of belief and defiance. And still at age 35, still trying to defy the odds. And what a decade it has been for us as well to watch so many of these great champions move into their 30s and so often in the past when players swiftly move from their prime to their past at pace this current group of great champions has stayed the course and Nadal doing exactly that tonight and there is no greater sight than a champion with his back firmly against the wall defying the odds the doubts and perhaps the destiny of where this Australian Open title will go. Medvedev serving 5 6, second set. Bolts. That might be one of the best and most well-constructed points I've ever seen. Rafa never stood still for a second. Uh, Rafa was like a was like a yo-yo in that in that point. I, I was I was so impressed at his his defensive capabilities throughout this point, but Medvedev just had him on a string. Bolts. Checking for confirmation from his box, and he'll be delighted to see what he got. Palms down. And he cut that one closer than he wanted to, also. 
After, after the previous one that he missed off the backhand. and has been throughout this tournament. Willingness from Medvedev to control his own destiny, take the ball out of the air. Total conviction to the course. And a two shot, a two set swing coming up in the next few minutes. And it's Nadal playing with more pressure on his shoulders. Got to keep hitting that backhand. Bogan. Bogan. And those first two slices are again more defensive. He's a little bit forced there, but two slices and then hit. Bogan. Bogan. Thank you. Just so few errors from this man. They are so magnified when they come. Out. Please. I just don't know why he needed to do that. Yeah, he uh, I mean, he, he hasn't used it all match, really. That backhand, short backhand approach come in. It puts him at a disadvantage. I mean, if, if Rafa gets a good hit at that ball, strange choice for me. aggression from Medvedev off that low ball there that surprised Nadal you had to watch the left hand here a lot of left hand through that ball you don't want Medvedev hitting backhand after backhand in the biggest points of the match do you it's such a good shot that's what he wants unlikely to be dramatically different to the set which has had many fluctuations undulations having to do things against their will, I think. 
I mean, the odds of making that volley weren't weren't that high. <laughs> Incredibly good shot at that point. And what a dig. You virtually needed a shovel to get that off the ground. Much better approach from Medvedev that time, but as you mentioned before, Patch, uh, just impressive at how he's willing to continue to come forward and attack. Not the most comfortable part of his game once he gets up there. Volleys are improving, there's no doubt about it. Improving because he's understanding where to put himself on the court more than the actual technique, to be honest. That approach, that point, he, he came forward a lot more on his own terms than the, the previous one where he got beat. Well, it is one of those matches where the ability of both these players to react to an ever-evolving strategy is wonderful to watch. That had a bit of everything, velocity, width, and intent. These tiebreakers had more attacking than baseline tennis. Both guys looking to come forward actively within the tiebreaker. Wouldn't be surprised to see Rafa serve in volley here. he was going to come forward there. I think Medvedev may have felt the same way. What a return from Medvedev. He just wasn't totally committed to that volley after the, the serve. He doesn't get in quick enough. He hesitates and gets caught. He wanted to serve and volley, didn't commit to it early enough. Wow. He thought it was good enough, didn't he, Brad? You watch Rafa play long enough, you know he is a, a fine exponent of the serve and survey before he comes in. And he had a look, he thought it was good enough. Not against Medvedev.
haven't had the cold. No, they haven't. It was quite clear, actually, too. Not that we needed to inject any more tension into the moment, but it certainly has. And is this second set slipping Please. from Nadal's grasp? Thank you, Blazer. Thank you. He's landed it. Six, five. Ice cold from Medvedev. He sensed, didn't he, how far Rafa was back. He almost hit the perfect drop shot on a hard court, and Rafa got there with some time. It was dangerous. Oh, my heart rate's up down here. Nadal's had a set point on his own serve. He's got to save one on his own serve here. Second set. Absolutely spellbinding. What an amazing set of tennis. Capped off by an amazing tiebreaker. I mean, that last shot from Medvedev, under pressure, needing to be on balance to be able to produce the control to thread the ball past his opponent, was extraordinary. He was a worthy winner in New York, and at two sets to love up, he looks like he's going to be a worthy winner here in Melbourne as well. That is a long way back for Rafa. Yeah, it's a tough ask at this point. You, I mean, it's, my sense was that Rafa had to win that set. That being said, has anyone ever counted Rafa Nadal out of anything? His last two forays to the net, first volleys were just not quite good enough. So much to admire, so much to absorb, so much entertainment thrown at us in that second set. Chances on both sides of the court. Wow, you remember that? That was a diamond cutter. And you just thought that that might give Nadal the opportunity. He went 4-1 up in that second set. Broke again, served for the set. But he just doesn't go away these days. Look at that. You need to applaud him. It's a heartbreak for Rafa's fans, but you have to respect the excellence from the other side of the court. 100%. Uh, Daniel Medvedev, I mean, when Rafa made that first break, especially after that fourth, you feel like here in this match and, and over the last Daniel, couple of years since he made his first Grand Slam final, we, we've just watched the ascendancy of Daniel Medvedev Set down quickly, please. to please one of the ready. and about to be potentially the most elite player in the world.
Lucky. He's beating the guys that are the absolute best players in the game. Still got some work to do. Savara like that one. That might have been the biggest statement he's made. The look on Rafa's face after this was a mixture of sort of shock and admiration. Yeah, probably. Gee, I love having someone that can speak the Queen's English in the commentary box with me. The what? The Queen's English. <laughs> Thank you, Pitch. You tee me up, I'll fill the gaps in. And Mevedev found a gap that didn't seem apparent on the previous point, that far easier for the Russian. That previous one though, Pitts, it, it was a, a look into his box, wasn't it? He, a sustained look from Rafa going, oh no, he can't hit that. That's as good as I've got, almost. Yeah, he's come out here and he's put a little extra on this ball, no question. I feel like both of them, Rafa's stepped it up, but, but Medvedev is also, he's, he's bearing down. He's saying, I'm not going to give anything away. I don't care what you're doing right now. Yeah, as we say down here, he, Rafa is throwing the kitchen sink at Medvedev in this game, and so far he's not coming up trumps. Extraordinary shot making though at, at the start of this third set. Yeah, this game is uh, this game is a little bit of statement. Credit to both players that they picked up where they left off at the end of that second set. Out. 
a bit deflating, isn't it, Fitz, to throw the kitchen sink at someone and miss? <laughs> oh. I'm not sure it's about missing. I think, I think it's about actually hitting the guy and it not having an effect. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's probably your, that's better for sure. That didn't hurt. Well, he's come out here, Natal, in this opening game in the third, and he is throwing haymakers. Ah, Medvedev. Bolt. Out. Well, he tried to get on the front foot to throw yes. another one there, but he allows Medvedev to get back to the sanctuary of juice. There you go, confirmation of what he's doing in this game. Up 20 kilometers an hour on average on that forehand. Wow. 20 kilometers an hour is an enormous amount. Didn't need to be that good. Yes. He makes a small error here and there and then comes back and responds with the first serve so often. Just negates his mistakes. Game First game and your death takes the opener in the third. And that perhaps will be a dagger through Nadal's heart. He came out there and gave it absolutely everything to try and get a little momentum going here at the start of the third. The Russian resisted the attack, and it was substantial from the forehand of the Spaniard. And this may be the last time we see the win predictor. <laughs> and it's going to be a big number on one side and a very small number on the other. Is this going to be the win predictor after the second set or, or now, after the first game of the third? That's a good question, Fitz. I don't think it makes a huge difference right now. not and giving him a too much chance no I, I I was noticing there were no comments there for a second <laughs> I mean every now and then the wind predictor gets one right Bolts. I mean, how good is that? How many kitchen sinks does he have? Well, right now, you, 
you know, <laughs> you really have to say it looks like he, it looks like he's too good. I mean, he, Rafa has thrown everything at him. He's been courageous here and could have been a set all, but he's not. And Medvedev is looking ominous. Isn't he just using every inch of this court? London. Ominous, precise. He's an assassin right now. Great serve, and he still needed a scamper over there to tidy things up. The lefty slice got him there, but the thing that stands out to me is that it's still 30 all. Still in this game. How much more disappointment can he take? Some of Rafa's facial expressions and some of the misses tonight have could have told the story just by showing those on those small margins that he's missing on on points like that to close out games. Three minutes gone, and we're not out of the second game of the third set.
Well, he's never going to flare out. He's always going to try and give himself a chance. And he's done that there. Out. Fortuna. Okay. Yeah, please rattle through that as the Russian 2 1 up, third set. Maybe I have by two games to all. having a chat with the trainer there let's just uh, keep an eye on what is coming Medvedev's way here a little bit like that pickle juice that everyone drinks to keep the cramps away. Ask him to turn it around this direction. Yeah. He needs a, he's got to be aware of... Uh... trying to cool himself down it's been an epic opening three games almost half an hour gone in this third set already for these three games Medvedev just getting uh, a little uh, extra energy drink or pickle juice from the trainer just trying to ward off any sort of cramps it was interesting he kind of put put his hands over his left wrist there I don't know whether there was anything in that in terms of any pain or anything that he was feeling to the trainer but Maybe just a precautionary tale to tell the trainer to keep an eye on, but for the moment, we keep enjoying this engrossing contest between these two. Nadal desperate to find a way to get competitive again. Thank you. Behind the players, move along quickly. Yeah, if you'd have gone at the end of the second set, you wouldn't have been too happy. That was 30 minutes of time waiting outside. <laughs> One of the most ridiculous rules we have in yeah, tennis. I, 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 I absolutely hate that, uh, that we do that to spectators, fans that spend their hard-earned dollars to come and watch great tennis and then get locked out of the stadium. Just sit in the nearest seat. Thank you. Thank you. 
Cheers. Sit on the stairs. Sit anywhere right now. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but I mean, I, I don't blame the fans Thank here you. because there's, there's there's fans that are going to miss out on two changeovers here at the back end of the court. Yeah, absolutely. Fifteen. Who made that rule, by the way? Well, it was supposed to be to speed the game up, that you just walk straight round and go and play the next game. But it, A, it never happens because the players all go and have a, a nice sort of vertical changeover rather than sitting down. And it, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. No one's ever explained the logic to me. Do you know who made that rule? Who? No, I don't know. <laughs> I thought you were asking. Here. No, I'm asking. <laughs> Sounded like you knew Fitz. Uh, Stayed at home, Rafa. What a point. The defense from Medvedev in this point. 39. That's how much harder he's had to work. An extra at least three shots, sometimes four shots, a rally against Medvedev to the previous rounds that he's played. And as Fitz said, normally you feel like he's going to win those longer rallies, those longer exchanges, but tonight it hasn't felt that way. Well, a couple of quite simple holds potentially gives us an opportunity just to put a meat on the bones of how this match and just again to underline what Brad was just saying and Fitzy, you can see when it does go long, it is Medvedev who is winning the majority of those rallies tonight. By a large number. The problem on the other end of that is that Rafa hasn't been able to play serve in one. He hasn't been able to he hasn't been able to be effective enough with his serve to create short balls off the serve to play any serve in one. So he hasn't played a lot of zero to four points. Out. Medvedev has done a, a great job, in my opinion, of holding much more easily overall through the match, getting through his service games quickly, and then basically turning Rafa's games into baseline games. It's interesting to see how aggressively he's played in this third set so far in the dark. He needs to send a racket off to the stringer. And it's smart because if there's any way of him turning this around, you feel as though he's got to take Medvedev's legs away. He's got to take legs away. He's got to take more time away before each shot. He's got to limit his options more. Medvedev's been able to dictate and control and, and maneuver the ball around the court so effectively and, and seemingly so easily. My question is, you know, given Rafa, we saw that stat before, raising the pace of his forehand by 20 kilometers per ball, can he maintain that? And that's got to be way more fatiguing as well. Somehow he's found the intended target. It defies logic a little bit to me that someone this tall, you know, not far away from being two meters in height, can cover the ground this well. Wait, please, please. Thank you. Laser, ready. Try to be quiet. Thank you. 
Wonderful mover. Bounce. Just wonder whether there's an opportunity here for Nadal to step up. Look at this again. Medvedev's able to roll the second serve in. He's 14K slower tonight on average. He's not feeling any threat from the Nadal return position. Is that an opportunity for him to shorten the point? It's interesting you ask that, Petch. I mean, just from the standpoint that I mean, we've seen him through this tournament actually take a return position much, much closer to the baseline than what historically we've seen from him. And, and he's been able to take the returns early and get him on guys very fast, okay. very effective in some of the matches that we saw him play. So being effective for both players in the last couple of games, it's 3-2 Medvedev. All right, everybody gets to come back in the stadium now. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like it just needs somebody to take the ball by the horns with that decision. And I mean, there's people that have missed five games already in this third set. That's just not a great experience for them. But anyway, that is for people above our pay grade to make the decision. But I do hope that they do listen occasionally to a rule that really doesn't make any sense and is certainly not a positive for the fan experience. What has been a positive, though, has been the quality of this contest. It probably needs for some people, for Nadal to grab a set, make a little bit more intrigue. Because Medvedev's getting closer and closer to putting his hands on that wonderful trophy. Time. Started with high octane tennis, started with a lot of intensity as you would expect, and it has not let up at all for two hours and 42 minutes. Prime time here in Melbourne. As Nadal has shown over the last fortnight that he is not beyond his prime yet, but he is up against a Russian who is chasing history. First man ever in the Open Era to win his first major, which he managed to do in New York, and then back it up by winning his second in the very next major he plays. travel very quickly you know when you're down two sets to love and it's halfway through the third you just can't get behind in your service games can you well you certainly don't want to Decisive point, the defining moment for Daniel. 
What defence. What sorcery was that? I mean, it's amazing right now. It's, it's, uh, Rafa's got to be, he, he's, he's such a great competitor and he's so great at controlling himself, but he's got to be so frustrated inside right now. Medvedev has got the hammer and nails out and is about to put the lid on the coffin. Thank you. Thank you. That's been one of his most effective plays tonight. When he reads the depth of Daniel Medvedev behind the baseline, and then he's disguised that shot well. But with with Medvedev's consistency of depth, it's it's hard to find opportunities to play that shot. You can't live off the drop shot. First ones, Medvedev was pressing just a little bit there, just, just a little rushed in that point to try and it, close it out and finish the break. Yeah, he wanted to finish it, didn't he? You could see his eyes light up on that last backhand. He senses it here. the feel Rafa has on those drop shots on the slice and on the volleys it's all the same type of feel he's he's better than most at that Jeez. oh Fitzy you were spot on you definitely don't want to get behind in the count at this stage but Nadal showing bits of magic to his fans somehow trying to claw that deficit back fighter he is from love 40 down he's pushing back on that coffin lid like a bad volley but it's really a tribute to Medvedev who just kind of over complicates things in his opponent's minds trying to hit shots that you don't normally hit to try and put him in a unique position but he's here there and everywhere
chair umpire certainly giving him plenty of time there before he called the score to start the clock. Standing from Rafa, upstanding from the crowd. I mean, that game is just a testimony in my mind to the competitiveness, what's been the greatness of Rafa Nadal over the years. I think for most of us there, we, we thought it was over, didn't we? We thought 3 2 down on the third. Two sets to love and love 40. But only a very strong mind can stand firm there. Thank you. Players are ready for you. Thank he you. got a little bit of help too, Sweet by the you. way, from Medvedev, who pressed early in those points when he had love 40. Oh. Yeah, that second point especially fits 1540. He tried to take a backhand very, very early and Ended up making an error out of that. Love 15. Well, some of that prey on his mind as well. Look at this from Medvedev. He's irritated for the first time tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please, as courtesy to both players, when they're about to serve, don't start calling out. Thank you. It's been an issue a little bit throughout the tournament. The crowd wanting to be involved a little bit. It's just a few people generally, but I knew that would get you fired up, Fitz. Yeah, I'm putting it down to COVID. Two years in isolation, I think. There's a bit more aggro here than there normally is. Yeah, yeah. He always wants he always wants two balls at each of the corners and he has two balls. He likes an even distribution of the balls. Thank you. He likes to direct traffic with that Thank sometimes. You, ladies, Please make sure the each of the ball kids has two balls. Small quirks of tennis players. attendance across the Australian Open this year coming in at 346,468 people it has been great to have the fans back still only about half capacity mark at that level oh. yeah this weekend was at 80% wasn't it Simplest of misses after manipulating his backhand so beautifully, you just couldn't imagine him missing. But he had to run a long way to end up hitting his backhand instead of his forehand. Yeah, and, and as he often does, 
Going to his right to Please. find a backhand there instead of hitting a forehand. Would have been much easier probably to find a forehand. His body momentum would have been going that way as well. Bolt. He was fighting himself a little bit going right while trying to hit the ball left there. That's the ball he was looking for on break point at 1540. He just jammed himself a little bit on it at that point at break point. Perfect spacing there. than some of his last service holds, but he gets there and he continues this advantage in the third, 4-3. Just wants the balls organized the way that he wants them. He's just uh, John Blum doing a nice job of just trying to calm him down and tell him that he'll pass the message on. You can see the ball kid running to the back there just to say the conductor orchestrating things. Unfortunately, he's not on that side of the court anymore. He needs to tell the ball kids at the other end. Just a few of the numbers from the match. Not many aces, but you're not going to serve many aces against Medvedev in that deep position. It's all about unreturned serves. They're going to be the significant numbers. I'll tell you one thing, Brad, that's probably escaped our attention. Let's look at this from Medvedev in the match. We were talking about ways that perhaps Rafa could have been a little bit more proactive, a way to try and hurt Medvedev. On the return games of the second serve, he's hit one second serve to Rafa's forehand. That's it. I mean, surely if you know the ball's coming there, you can do a lot with it if you're Nadal. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, you should be able to. You should be able to think about, I mean, he, he could be running around. He could be setting himself up much earlier to find forehands, knowing that it's going to go to that position. Oh. Well read, well played. Talked about earlier, it's one of the rare occasions that he's been able to find a shorter ball off of his serve to do some damage off the very first ball. Medvedev consistently finding a way to extend points.
13.15. Fourth hour, we enter. Nadal has been here before in some of his previous Australian Open finals. Four rounds, 50 was their final in the US Open back in 2019. And this man still harbors ambitions of turning this around. 14-15. There hasn't been a minute that's gone by that I haven't loved this. Right there with you. The quality has just been so good and it's been so interesting. <laughs> Turn the forehand down the line. Backhand drop shot to the short portion of the court. Made Medvedev run to every corner of the court there was. Nice close there, Fitz. Well, not just a not nice close, but but. The shot Rafa hit there was clever also. He, he did everything he could to make Medvedev miss that volley, but you could see him open the face the closer he got to the net because he knew he had to hit the ball up. Great control. Second serve is getting slower, a little, a little bit slower and safer. And Rafa is trying to run through it and generate a, a very powerful first shot in the rally. And a lot of them are going deep. We've seen Medvedev get into it with the crowd a little bit. He doesn't like it when they Thank you. when it's they applaud Thank you. errors that he makes. I don't like it either. Oh. taking a lot of risks. I don't know why he's persevering with that drop shot. He doesn't need to, I don't think. He's he's had Rafa, I, I wouldn't say totally covered from the back, but he's been winning from the back more than enough. I don't think he needs to use that. I, I think that was a point played out of frustration, actually. Irritation from, from the point before. I mean, I, I almost feel like he was semi-tanking that point.
scintillating shot from the Spaniard. He'll serve for the third. like an Agatha Christie book. As soon as you think you've got it figured out, there's another character that comes in. I mean, how good a shot was that? I mean, he's got to pull it off. He's got to make it. This is perhaps his last chance. And he has absolutely nailed it. Mark, I feel like Medvedev was so strong mentally right up until he got to the stage where he tried to press at love 40 and and i, I think he started uh, he almost changed his game slightly he tried to finish points a bit quicker than he'd been doing all match and he's got into a bit of a different mindset now and he's he's let the crowd get to him again Time. He never went away. He came out. He hit Medvedev hard and early in this third set, but he couldn't find a way to breach the defenses of the Russian. But he has stayed with him all the way through this magical hour that we have witnessed in this third set until he has sent a passing shot past the Russian that has given him hope. A bit of self-sabotage from Medvedev in the last game at 15.30 with a fairly ambitious shot. His run through to the US Open final for Medvedev was around about 12 hours. He's put in an extra five hours work here in Melbourne to get through to the final here. There's still a lot in play that we don't know. Including the outcome of this game. He's been so good at breaking back. Banner looking on. He wants more. Rafa desperate to give himself a chance for his second Australian Open title. And it would come in the most unlikely of fashions if he were to recover. But he is riding the crest of a wave of confidence now. Three points played with perfection. Just wait. Ladies and gentlemen, please show respect to both players and don't call out just before the play is about to start. Thank you. Remarkable from Rafa. 
Medvedev leads by two sets to one. Five of the greatest points, to be honest, he's played in a row. Absolutely, in the match. I mean, uh, it was he was dominant there for for a little sh his part, the way he played the ball to start with. Gave Rafa two break points, and the, and the crowd reacted to the to the score, Thoughts not to the fact that he had missed the Daniel shot, but to the score. And he definitely did a fair amount of self sabotage from there. Yeah, there was a little bit of implosion, wasn't it? It, it, it? Subtle in a way, but you could see it building up in him, and he's got to get himself back together. He, I, I think he went through just as much stress against Kyrgios in the second round when the crowd really was rough. This is different. They, they were incited to a degree to be rough in that second round match, but in this match... The crowd is simply Rafa fans. Um, there are a small element here that are doing the wrong thing, but it sounds worse, I think. Uh, and, and guys, he just has to put that out of his mind and realise there are enough people in this stadium that appreciate what he's doing and just take strength from that. He's got to focus heavily right now, does Medvedev, or he could get into trouble. to focus on is what's coming off Rafa's racket at the moment and it feels as though it's got a lot more potency to it as well. Well you took the words out of my mouth Mark. He, there, there is more forward speed coming out of the Rafa forehand and he's not missing it as much. You know he hit some of those uh, miss hits into the net with nothing on them. He, it's not happening now. He, they are going faster off the front off the strings. Balls. Let's second, please. That needed to be delicate, and it was. Is he just stubborn, though? Why would he revert to that style of game? I, I still think before, it, or at three or love 40, he was playing the same way he played the whole match. He's going for more and more of that stuff. I feel like it's stubbornness. Out. Game. First game, fourth set. Get straight into this four set. Big hold for Medvedev. And again, just going over to the trainer to get his drink that he wants. And as I said, it was a much easier route through to the US Open final. It was been tougher here. It's been hotter. And you just never know whether physically he will struggle. I, I doubt it, but you just never know. Well, there was a little sign in that game. I'm not sure if you guys saw it, but he did take his racket and kind of hit his quads a little bit, which you see players do at a time when they're just feeling they're not getting as much out of their legs as they'd like to. We just heard him ask for the physio. Fitz, to go back to your uh, question about being stubborn, don't you think all the guys at this level are stubborn? I think it's a, I think it's a basic commonality of, uh, of guys that achieve this level. Oh. 
second. I mean, it's it's one of the great beauties of three out of five set tennis, isn't it? You know, he, he comes out in the first set and it, it, he's on fire, absolutely lighting things up. And then it starts to become more and more and more of a physical battle, which makes it more of a mental battle. The, the things that have occurred now over the course of three hours and 18 minutes, all a build to what's going on, sense of fatigue. Rafa wants to push it to 15 rounds. Wow. I actually thought, I'm not sure about you boys, but I, th I thought that if it went deep and it was physical, Medvedev would have the advantage because of seeing what I've seen with Rafa during this tournament and certainly his lead up to it in the month or two beforehand but right now I'm doubting my thoughts uh, Rafa looks a bit stronger I rarely doubt your thoughts Fitz I would have I would have agreed with you at the start of the match I would have said if it came down to a physical battle I would give the edge to Medvedev 100% I really think that on a clay court you can do that. On this court, you will rarely win if you play this, make this play. Try to drop shot off a, off a drop shot. The ball bounces too high. He's got to drill that deep. He had a he could have run at that forehand and smashed it. 100% Fitz. He got to that ball in such good shape. He, he could have done anything with that ball. He tends to love to go cross court with it. I think he thinks. Nadal's hanging in that backhand corner waiting for that. To be fair, if it hit that on a clay court, he would have lost the point as well. sense of urgency in the way that Medvedev is playing this game. He's getting some looks with the missed first serves from Nadal. frequency of break points coming Medvedev's way in this contest. Wow, did he go big on that ball. So impressive. So Guys, fearless. Brad, sorry, I, I can't help but think that Medvedev's gait the way he's walking between points is a little different now. It's slightly compromised. I think he's, I think he is physically a little sore here. Oh. I mean, 
three hours and 22 minutes with Rafa Nadal will do that to you. And he did cramp a little bit, right? In two matches ago. Just a little bit at the end of his quarterfinal match. Well, he had some tape on the back of his left hamstring in his previous round in the semi-finals. That's not there today. Dangerous times for Rafa. Chances that Medvedev isn't taking are mounting up right now. That will be playing on his mind. I could be wrong, but I think that's the first wide backhand that he's missed in the net. I don't remember him missing a ball from that position in the net previously in the match. Shot is becoming a uh, major character. Do you think there's any sense that he's suddenly playing it with the frequency that he is because he senses that Medvedev is struggling a little that's physically? I, that's exactly what I'm wondering. Exactly what I'm wondering. Uh, I mean, how many drop shots have we seen in this game from both guys? But I mean, Rafa's played four drop shots now in this game, four or five at least. Thoughts. Hugo Gaston is loving this match. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't seen Hugo Gaston play, he hits a few of those as well. <laughs> he only played 60 of them against uh, Dominic Tim a few years ago. <laughs> Find a first serve here, Nadal. See who's looking stronger from the back now. Who do you feel has the advantage in the baseline rallies now? Well, it's changed. Uh, Rafa is hitting the ball heavier than he was earlier in the match, I think. Certainly relative to Medvedev's speed, anyway. And I, I, I just feel like there's more effort, there's more urgency, a bit more desperation down Danil's end of the court right now. He's, he's worried. Certainly a change. Done very well to come out of that game as well. One of his worst in terms of first serves made. 
and somehow he has got himself to the safety of one all. Pitch, do you think if that lion in the African bush came at <laughs> Rafa Nadal, he'd just run straight at it and drop the shoulder? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> the, the lion would turn and run. Absolutely. <laughs> Rafa would probably run Set it down. down. Please. Love 15. Five sets of tennis. This is what happens. There's ebbs and flows, there's peaks and valleys, and this is turning, isn't it? It feels like it's happening. Out. 15 30. Half a step slower to get in position. And that's all it takes. That's the biggest change. We, we've team. all mentioned it, we've all seen it, but Danielle definitely looks like he's lost a little bit of a step getting to the ball. He's just not quite behind the ball right now to make his shots. Thirty foot. Can he find enough of those to bail himself out of trouble? Bolt. Please. Seismic shift, Nadal a break up in the fourth. And he can't hide the drop off anymore, Brad. Nadal's going to be very aware of what's going on now. Yeah. Can they bring thousand like percent four no. bottles of water to my coach? Please. He's just asked for four bottles of water to his coat, so he's, he's going to replenish it with some electrolytes or something in the drinks, I think. Now, this is an area right here that he has to learn to let go. You can't take that personally. The view from above and the view next door. And from Rafa's point of view, the view just got a whole lot better, not just in terms of the scoreboard here at the start of the fourth with the break, but also that is his opponent getting the trainer out onto court. Massaging the little quads. A loss of physical conditioning against somebody like Nadal is not where you want to be. Early stages of the four set. Settle down and move along quickly. Play will resume. Thank you.
twofold problem here, Brad, for Medvedev is that he's clearly struggling. And the only way to really kind of rush Rafa is hit the ball harder, which takes more energy. Absolutely. I mean, and that point right there, I mean, he, he looked a little frenetic in that point, trying to rush through the point a little bit, trying to find an advantage, but so hard to do with Rafa. His defensive skills so good. And if you've never played when you fear the onset of cramps as well, it's quite a stressful place to be mentally. You're constantly trying to manage and push that thought away, but you can feel it. Very hard to stay fully focused and engaged in, in playing the points when your body is rebelling against you a little bit. So I think earlier on when Medvedev seemed to have control at the back of the court, we, we all felt probably that Rafa needed to risk more, go for more, take a few more chances. Well, the role's reversed now. Medvedev, I think, has to risk a little more and go for the line like he did with that backhand. And the forehand, the shot before as well, by the way. Rafa needs to find some first serves to make his life a little easier. feeling good what he did to make Rafa hit an extra Thank ball you. and then another extra ball and then another extra ball but Rafa absolutely fearless such a tough overhead and then come on Brad he's hitting the ball better now than he was uh, three hours ago he has absolutely uncorked that forehand started at the beginning of the third game by Medvedev. Fauci, Fauci. It's not that he hasn't created chances. It's been his inability to capitalize on them. Can he rectify that now? Folks. After his quarterfinals, he gave us an insight into his mindset, I think, Daniel Medvedev in the post-match interview. He lost the first two sets against Ali Sim, and he steeled himself. He said, well, I had to make him earn it all the way to the line. And that has to be the mindset he incorporates now, I think. 
What a game that was from him and the strong mindset that he uh, prevailed with there. This is awesome. Ready for play, thank you. Please. Quiet, please. Thank you. Thank you. Folks. Fitz, can I just reiterate what you said? Love 15. This is awesome. Absolutely awesome right now. The drama. We've got so many things to process right now. Rafa, Rafa using the crowd. Medvedev fighting them sometimes. Iconic. Well, he's a warrior, an intellectual samurai. How good was that? 30, 40. And so brave again. And as you've talked about, obviously, so bold. But that's what it takes on that kind of a point. Give him a different look. Do something a little different. Rafa going very deep now. Let's for some. Rafa's movement to get to that ball and find a forehand was unbelievably impressive. It's an indication of obviously how big that important that point was. Thank you. Bolts. Height on it actually proved to be the pivotal part of that pass. Very tough for Nadal to pull off the winner from up there.
I can't help thinking if he was yes. physically feeling better, he would not have tried that shot. I think he made a split decision to try and finish the point on a very difficult high lob. Normally, he would have played a forehand there, I think, and got back into the point. That was a physical decision. That was born out of desperation, that serve and volley. It's no longer got any stealth attached to it. It's not a surprise tactic. Nadal saw it coming. And the serve wasn't quite as good as the previous one. Didn't Thank open you. the court quite as Thank much. Bye, please. to fall from Medvedev. Nadal Jeez. blindsided by the brilliance of this shot. Just committing everything he had to all three of those forehands. A fifth chance to break. Out. Deuce. And in a match of so many convoluted long exchanges, instant gratification will be a good feeling for Medvedev. Oh. And he went for it again. Almost his fastest serve of the match. I want to know what the wind predictor is saying now. It's blown up. It's just <laughs> exploded. It, it's smoking. Fitz, I'm pretty sure the wind predictor is four guys sitting in a room drinking some beers. Right now, they have no idea what to do. Thank you. Survives again. Goodness gracious. Yes. Just getting away with that play, really. Again, I think if he was physically feeling better, he wouldn't be trying so many of these. Surely he's it's keeping the point shorter. He's rolling the dice early in the rally. Yeah, hundred percent fits, a hundred percent. Nadal's feeling it as well. He was doubled over at the back of the court there. Please.
anything like it. Well, maybe that man has, Rod Laver, and he may have played a few shots like that in his illustrious career. But this is a night like no other here in Melbourne. Nadal won't be denied. 3-2 in the fourth. beauty and there is skill and that last point from Nadal had both of those in equal measure conjured from somewhere you asked for it Pitsy there it is that's the swing it's still giving Medvedev the edge but that last game must feel like a dagger for the Russian Seats behind the players, thank you. Ready to start. The serve has abandoned him in this four set. He's at 33% at the moment, the Spaniard. And somehow still a break ahead. You know, I, I know I agree with Brad Stein a lot in my life on tennis matters and others, but I agree with him on this as well. Four guys in a room drinking beers <laughs> who have had a carton each. <laughs> if, you, if you're sitting down here on this court and you think it's 90-10, I'll eat my hat, and I actually don't have one here. Well, the lack of first serves has hurt him, but the quality of returning at the moment is extraordinary. There have only been three missed returns out of the 48 return points played in this fourth set. Giving each other nothing. Earning everything. That's with Medvedev still serving at 67% first serves. First one was coming. Daniel did such a good job with it that he had no option but to play that out of the air and ended up playing it right back to him. Watch how he, he had nothing else. That was such a good ball from Medvedev. And then he went Radwanska on us on that backhand. Wow, that 
is so good. 14-15. Full swing, half volley off the baseline. trainer out and we saw that he was clearly having some issues and then we felt he was a little bit slow in his step but what he's done to keep himself in these points and make Rafa work for every single point has been incredibly impressive and Rafa has been up to the task 15 love Medvedev has not gone away he may be hurting but he's not gone away It has just become the Russians' third longest match ever. The longest, of course, the final that he played against Rafa in New York back in 2019. Second longest against Felix Oje Aliassim here, four hours, 42 minutes. to call out between the first and second so it is especially irritating to both players please don't do it thank you but especially to mr medvedev Nadal conserves energy for greater tasks ahead. 4 3. This is going to be the greatest advert for golf of all time, isn't it, Brad? You remember when Rafa did the interview with Jim the other night and he said, You like, how do you stay so fit at this stage of your career? And Rafa said, I play golf. <laughs> <laughs> I can see all the ATP players now just logging online. Get me a tea time. <laughs> all this fitness trainer I've got, all I need to do is get out there on the links and I'll be absolutely fine. I think he's doing 400 reps around, the, around each hole before he hits another shot. He has to be. He's doing the old, uh, the old Lendl system. You hit a shot and then sprint to the ball. <laughs> It's always been this narrative surrounding, swirling around the big four, big three, whatever, wherever you want to go with it, that they've been the hardest workers, the mentally toughest, the all of this thing. But when I watch Rafa play tonight and Medvedev to a large degree, you see their skill set coming out as the physical factors start deteriorating. And you've seen that tonight. We've seen the touch, the drop shots, the ability to volley, the little flick to go up 40 from Rafa. Their skill set has simply, for me, been more impressive than everyone else's. Yes, the other parts obviously play a huge factor in that, but if you have confidence in being able to do a load of different things to counter what your opponent is going to do, it's going to give you that confidence. And it's one of the reasons that they've stayed ahead of the chasing pack for so long. This man trying to hunt down Rafa in his fourth ever major final. Of course, he got past Djokovic in New York. Rafa proving to be a harder hurdle here. Out. Love 15. Out. 
love that area. Everybody in the stadium, including us, a bit stunned with yes. those two with those two unforced errors. Yep. If I knew he was feeling good physically, I'd say, if I was his coach, I'd say, don't hit that anymore. He's not winning enough with it. It's too dangerous. I'm wondering if he's if he's trying to make an investment in the fifth set. I don't know. Rafa looks pretty strong here in the fifth hour that we're starting. By the way, Brad, did I say we are starting? I sound like one of those coaches who's coaching someone said, we just won. <laughs> we are playing. Yeah, I don't buy into that. It's become a con common occurrence. I don't can't buy into it. I've, I've avoided that throughout my career. Good man. These guys are into their fifth hour. I'm just the navigator. Just couldn't get enough depth on the ball. Medvedev, quality strike on the forearm from Nadal. Something that was lacking early in the game. It just, it just feels like it's going to be last man standing, doesn't it? They're both trying to wear each other out here. This is going to give Medvedev a huge lift, though, if he can get back on serve at this stage of the fourth. versus his two-hander taken aggressively cross-court. The other thing is that I, I feel Rafa is just reading that now as well. He, he sees it coming. seen Daniel stumble. Yeah, saw that at the end of that point. Off. It says he tried to change direction back to that ball. Yeah. You watch right here on the replay. the pot games easy to get into and so hard to get out of and yet Nadal has figured something out Nadal leads five game to three just his second ace of the match what an escape and that drop shot by Medvedev such a key part of that game. Out. Love 15.
15 all. Just going for it at this point. How good has this backhand down the line been? It's been on fire now in this fourth set. Third two. Six two in the third. I thought it, I thought Medvedev had him. We're witnessing something special. Set point. And there was that backhand Brad was talking about on the break point. Yes. Fitz, I was there with you. I had Rafa. I had Rafa in the coffin. He refused to go. Gee, I'd forgotten about the coffin. He, no he knocked the top off. <laughs> Completely resurrected himself. And that is Medvedev. Yeah, the heaviness of the return is now proving too much for the speed of foot of Medvedev when he really cracks it like that. Earlier in the match, when he was fresh, he, he'd get there physically with, with good footwork. He's absolutely struggling when, when that ball comes that, that fast. Understand the uh, extra effort to do the jumping uh, backhand there when you're it. not feeling ideal physically. That takes a lot of effort. It does. I think he's just trying to get a bit of a, a bit of extra early purchase on the ball, isn't he? Take it early. The only explanation I can think of. Out. Okay. Well, it's going to take a lot of explaining just how great this was tonight. And on we go. Nadal will serve for the fourth. Sometimes the changeovers can feel like an eternity. Tonight they've felt as though they've been a welcome relief from the intensity of the couple of games that we've been watching. I think everybody, the crowd, everyone needs to break for a, a moment or two. They have condensed so much greatness into every couple of games that they've played.
and still they stay and they may well have another hour or so here as well at Melbourne Park. Out in Garden Square on the big screen, the fans have made this tournament what it is this year. And we have had the ending as well, of course, that everybody in Australia wanted yesterday with Ash Barty winning in the singles. 44 years of waiting over for Australia. As Nadal tries to win his second Australian Open 13 years after he won his first. Can he take this final into a fifth set? struggling to find first serves, but that was a huge one to start this game. Extraordinary. Ball to love. Triple set point. Difficult things in and all and of sports. About to restart. Take your seats. Thank you. Daniel Medvedev to Zoom. And consider this highly likely here at four hours and fourteen minutes. This will go into the sixth hour. Highly likely. If you want to call out between first and second serve, I'll have security remove you, okay? <laughs> Love the game. the precision after this long on the court with so much on the line is just exceptional timed his run to perfection
Tertium. This fifth set is going to be drama from start to finish, as it has been already from the very first point. And he's got him again. Way. I feel that Medvedev is a little bit predictable with those approach shots. He could have held that last Benji. ball just a little bit longer. Rafa broke really early to the forehand. Right there, a little bit better. Held it a little bit longer. Jeez. Let Rafa break the other way. You know how I mentioned earlier, Brad, about it. The longer the rally went on, earlier in the match, I felt Medvedev might have the advantage. It's changed, hasn't it? I feel like he's got to finish these points quickly uh, here, and, and I think he senses that too. Well, that's his greatest weapon, to be able to finish them very quickly. Still serving at a very impressive rate and hitting aces. Rafa the one holding that ball, but set up again with the backhand down the line, Pex. That backhand down the line in the last yes. set, I, I, that, the backhand down the line hit six clean winners down the line off the backhand side that were all on really key, pivotal points. Advantage, Medvedev. I think we're seeing the key shot for Medvedev here now, aren't we? I mean, it's always a weapon. I think his first serve is underrated, but he, he almost has to serve his way out of trouble here. Yeah. Mentally, that was some accomplishment. Early break point down in the fifth, having had a two sets to love lead in the final of a major. That is not easy to do. Yeah, and Fitz was absolutely right. I mean, he s served his way out of trouble there. It's amazing, really, that the serve pace and accuracy hasn't dropped off at all as the legs have started to feel a little bit. It's so often you have a difficult time pushing up and fits. The wind predictor is up. I'm not looking anymore. Did, did you look at it? Come I on. did briefly. <laughs> um, no one can pick who's going to win this here at the moment. And I think Rafa physically is a little stronger. I mean, so, if you, where are you at, Fitz? Where well, are you? I, well, well, I said to Pets before that I, I, I think starting a, a one-off set at the physical, considering the physical state they're both in, you, you've got to really go with Rafa. But he's a game behind. Medvedev's held. I go back to where I started from and just switch the names. Yeah, about 55 45 now for Rafa. Fair call. There's a real determination radiating from Medvedev here at the start of the fifth. Absolutely. Great depth on that return. You can see it. He's recentered himself.
32-15. He's there mentally. The question is, where is he at physically? Still a question mark a little bit. Fourteen touch. Same determination that's radiating off Medvedev from Nadal there. That is resolute and robust best to keep the Russian at bay. And like Fitzy said, I think you have, I have, I have the feeling right now that if if Medvedev drops off in his percentage on first serves and gives Rafa a few looks on second serves, Rafa can get into those points and and make the points a little bit more physical. But he's got a great chance to break at some point. But it's dependent on the first serve of Medvedev. Well read. Well read. Sat on the line there. This is the old G and D we talk about, the guts and the determination. Look at that from Medvedev. I think if he's going to get victory tonight, Medvedev, yes, I think he has to serve his way to victory. And I don't mean he has to serve aces. I think he has to hit a high percentage of first serves from here to the finish line. I think John needs he needs a temple guard up there. <laughs> He's made a tough stuff. John Bomb as is the Russian. 2 1. Fifth set. Two games to one.
changeover a chance for everyone to gather their breath re-engage with a quite extraordinary final here in Melbourne Physical point coming out of that changeover. Jarring finish at the end for Medvedev. 50. Standard of play just hasn't wavered for a moment. Actually, I actually like that play. I think he's just got to pull the trigger. And, you know, if he gets a, a ball, particularly on that backhand side, go for the line ball. That's where you get a lot of your uh, reward if you're good enough to make it. Keep the points short. Just try to take your chances. Out. Yeah, I agree with you, Fitz, and especially in the... Uh, Especially in the early parts of these games, it's, it's one thing if he gets a lead in the game, if he can win a first point, or if, if the point becomes really, really significant, then you've got to dig in and you've got to be willing to play a physical point. But early on, you've got to take some risk and try and get ahead early without burning too much of what's going on in your gas tank. Two games all. You just wonder, given what we see on the sideline with the trainer and getting the legs massaged, you know, you want to be, you, you want to, I don't want to have that feeling because I don't, I don't want to feel the pain necessarily, but you want to know what, exactly where he's at, you know, because he, he comes out and he's, he's actually. Oh. He's actually capable of playing some really high-level tennis still. Out. Rafa definitely the, has the upper hand, doesn't he? If they that's... get in the backcourt rally now, so that's why Medvedev has to keep the points short, and it's why he needs to win 
a certain percentage off his first serve, and, yes. whether it be a clean ace or not. It's the first serve, Fitz. It's the yep. first serve. That point starting with a second serve. And that's Ouch. a case in point right there. Yep. <laughs> I, I just think he has to just go for his serve now and, and hope and maybe even see some uh, second balls as first ones. Occasionally, maybe. 30, 50. We know he's been pretty good at that at times where he, he basically hits two first serves. String shot from Rafa looking to make his move. A rare second serve into the forehand of the Spaniard, and you can see why. And a good return off of the first serve. He sat on that wide one to the backhand. Three in a row, Medvedev's gone wide on that side in this game. He got beat on the first two. Sat on that one, great return. Out. Same serve, he saved match point against Azur Ali Asim earlier in the week. The big bomb wide on. That was match point. This was break point at two on the fifth. It was significant. You can feel it, Fitz. You can feel it from you can feel it from Rafa. Once he gets into the point, you can tell he just feels he's got the advantage. Please, thank you. Players are ready. Oh. Yeah. The best shot he has ever hit. It's 3 2 Nadal in the fifth. Astounding. Medvedev trying to create offense, trying to create offense on that forehand. And he had Rafa on the run. Just counters with back down the line. Grant, most of the time I would have accused uh, Petsch of exaggerating there, but I think in the circumstances there's, there's some validity in what he says. He's hit a lot of great running forehands in his life. Well, like too many to remember, but at this moment, he's looking for his 21st. Pitch, you might be right. What a moment as that ball was hanging in the air. The whole stadium was quiet until it introduced itself to the line and the stadium erupts. This crowd, the world watching, have been treated to something incredible this evening. Players are waiting for you. Thank you. Thank you.
for the first time tonight. Nadal holds his future in his own hands. Bounce. You run out of superlatives. He's still going to have a say. Credit to Method of fighting, competing.
Toe to toe. Medvedev not going anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not call out during the points. No matter how excited you get, how good the point is, please try to restrain yourself, I think. Someone did yell out there during the point, but I, I think it was more that they were just got a little over exuberant about how good it was at one stage. Surf percentage has not been great. Good recognition here from Medvedev and a good Jeez. chase as well. Still life in the legs. The choice there on the volley had to be something that where he brushed the strings across the ball and dropped it really short. That wasn't the option, was it? No. Or back down the line, Fitz. He could have held that and volleyed behind him there. These are gifts. Barely missed a return in the fourth set. Medvedev no. Nadal having to work so hard on serve. Terrific acceptance of the situation that he finds himself in Medvedev here having dropped his serve in the previous game Trying to hit straight back Bolts. What a combination of shots off the backhand side. The diagonal dagger across court. And a gem down the line, and here comes Medvedev. First verbal celebration we've heard from Rafa all night. Had a few fist pumps, but that is the first. And it was a come on, not a vamos. Advantage, 
Brad, you said there was going to be some drama no matter which way we turned in this fifth. It's playing out that way. But who knows what's going to happen here? This is everyone's on the edge of their seats. You can't script this stuff. Live sport. Some of them are behind their seats. He has had so little success with three points out to the backhand on the ad side. But he yes. has had the courage and his convictions at the biggest of moments to go there. And not just go there, but he's landed his first serve when he's needed to. Back to back break points on the ad side found that angle. Point from Daniel Medvedev. Finding the offense, attacking, obviously pushing himself through those points. Longest match of Medvedev's career. This is why you can't pick it. it. He's missed three backhands in this game on break points, right? Oh, you wouldn't have bet on that. That no. one, that one especially. Rafa did not get the serve quite as wide. You wouldn't expect him to do that in months and months on the tour, would you? After what we've seen tonight, incredible. dropped off for Medvedev here in the fifth set as you can see I was saying how hard he was having to make Nadal work in that fourth significant drop and it has allowed Nadal to potentially take a 4-2 lead in this fifth set and you'd be surprised if he doesn't go wide to the back end again after what's transpired in this game Settle down, please. Thank you. Fifteen. Guys, did either of you see the Djokovic Nadal final here that went into the sixth hour? I did. And Rafa missed a very big backhand down the line to go up a break in the fifth. Maybe tonight is payback. Karma. Something different from Everdeff. 30. Out. 
Fortuna. It looks like a simple hold, but at this stage, uh, one of the most complicated finals that we've ever witnessed. Nothing comes easily. Nadal up a break, 4-3. Fitz, check your screen. It's about to come up. Uh, more swings and roundabouts than I've seen in a while. Finally. Well, Mehmed Dev may well have a say in that after what we just saw in that last returning game. He's not that far away. Rafa is still going to have to keep applying the pressure still find those first serves which he's done a better job of in this fifth set almost 70 percent from the spaniard with his first serve chasing down his second australian open title Anyways, kind of fitting here tonight in Melbourne. With only one break in hand, this thing is far from over. Saw how tough that service game was. The last game for Rafa. Medvedev gets his teeth into this game early. Breathtaking point. Bold. And Mark, we've just Pretty ticked over the five hour mark. We're into the sixth hour. The question for me is, is it the bewitching one? And right now, Fitz, Medvedev can't afford not to fight for every point. Out. And I was saying it was fitting here in Melbourne because, 13, if anything, 15. this tournament has given him some of the most heartbreaking moments of his career. That 2012 loss to Novak, the demolition as well by Novak in 2019. Pitch, I've got to say, that was one heck of a call from John Blom on the money. Big Russian on the run. 
Virtue also <laughs> found his wheels. He found his wheels on this point. You know, you ha for, for people who have played the sport, like, like the three of us, I, you, you, you have to admire this. It, for me, it's almost beyond admiration. The, 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 the commitment there for Medu Medvedev to get to that ball and make that shot this deep in the fifth. Let's listen. the smallest of margins 40 30 <laughs> that's the one he's trying to add to it's won the other three majors more than once substantially more Just the second man in the open era to win all four Grand Slam tournaments twice and only the fourth man in history. It is an elite select club. Djokovic, of course, has already done it. And of course, his 21st major. He's a game away. Thank you, please. What a start to the game for Nadal. Iga Schrontek still here, watching her hero. Oh. Out. 
14-13. That was as far as we've seen him move to his right to find a backhand. It's halfway into the, the deuce side of the court. Bolts. Sensational drop shot from Medvedev. He gives himself a final chance. Nadal, though, will come Nadal out to serve for the title. And did you guys see the look Daniel gave his box? He, he, he looked with a steely determination. And even still, immediately called the trainer. He's, he's trying to prepare himself for one last ditch effort here. brilliance that was from Medvedev on the last point of that game made things a lot easier for himself than it actually was shine of course without darkness one of the men's game's greatest ever stars is shining brightly here in Melbourne as did this man here Rod Laver one of the four men that have managed to win the four majors twice is that Nadal's destiny now Roy Emerson, the other one, along with Novak Djokovic. Rarefied air. He can see it, but will he hold it? I think he can smell it. He got himself a little bit jammed up on the ball. Thirteen fifteen. Oh. Oh. 
Fouts. Third Well, couldn't finish without a little extra drama thrown in. It's not over. An improbable comeback on the cards now for Medvedev. 30 40. Unbelievable. Fitz, he's, Medvedev's done what you were talking about a while back. He's started to take more risk with the down the line balls from both sides, backhands and forehands. He's done damage down the line. That Brett. point. Yeah, Brad, I didn't want to say too much. I, I thought I was just witnessing history right there. It's not over, though. At 30 love, I thought history was about to be made. Time elation. Warning, Mr. Nittal. turn of events and you have to have incredible admiration for Medvedev's level of belief that even at 5-4 30 love down he saw a route back that no one else did What a journey it has been for Jill Savara and Daniel Medvedev. Of course there had to be extra drama. Of course there did. The crowd, I tell you, pets, they were in shock. They, they all thought, we all thought. It, a 30 love, it was going to happen. from both after five hours and 16 minutes. The disappointment on Rafa's face right now is palpable. And Medvedev's got a new lease of life. Scarcely believable. Bolts. Out. Uh. 
30 40. Yes. Tennis is beyond believable. Bench. Five hours and 19 minutes, five all in the fifth set. To Please. have the courage. To have the courage. Out. Yes. The ability to keep executing, coming up with shots. Both got something to lose. They're going to have two sets to love. 3 2. Love 40 on Rafa's serve. Couldn't break. Rafa's serve for the match up 30 love. for a second time. What an effort. What a competitor. You've got to feel for Medvedev, though. He tried to do the right things. And he did do a lot of the right things in the return game. So, Rafa serving for the 21st Grand Slam of his career and the 15-30 double fault. He is human. He went after that second serve too, didn't he, at 30-15. He really went after it. He tried to get a winner off the serve but I think it was 165 case one thing's for sure gentlemen we will never forget this never seen never heard anything like it He wasn't even sure he was going to be able to make the trip to Melbourne, whether his tennis career was over. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Once again, he stands four points from the title.
It's only his third ace, but it brings up three championship points. Please. players of all time in one of the most improbable victories of all time. that is Rod Laver wants to get his own souvenir of what we have just witnessed tonight. Daniel Medvedev, you are a superstar and you are going to be one of the game's greats. There is no question that that has got to be one of the most painful times in his life right now. Rap has been on that side of the court when he's lost to Novak back in 2012. He knows what that pain feels like, but tonight, the line between desolation and elation was invisible. Brad Stein, how has he done it? I mean, people that know me, Patch, would say this is impossible, but I, I, I feel almost speechless. It's so astounding to have watched this and seen how deep both these guys dug to get to this point but to see Rafa from where he was six and a half seven months ago to come through and be able to win this Grand Slam in this way is beyond comprehension the greatness of the man the commitment, the heart, I mean, 
I, I just, I'm in awe. Pitsy, I mean, just looking at these pictures, looking at what it means to him. I mean, it's it's everything. Yeah, look, he's he's one of the great warriors our sport has ever seen. He transcends tennis. He's a sporting great. He, he's a hero, I think, to so many of us all. You know, even when you don't know him that well, you cross paths with with the rare person that rapper is sometimes he's polite he's generous um, he always has time to stop move out of his way and shake hands with all the people in the tennis fraternity and others so he means a lot to everybody I, I, I don't think when you get to this age people think you can do it as much it's in the back of your mind that possibly they can but the reality, when you actually see this and see it happen, um, it is hard to take, uh, to take in. It is hard to believe what he's just done. You know, where he was a couple of months ago to be here now, it's, it's a memorable thing. I will never ex uh, forget this experience. And I too have incredible, I think, respect for what Medvedev has done here tonight too. What a competitor. He is, and we will see so much more of him. But tonight it is about Rafa to come back from two sets to love pitch and win this is more than memorable. We'll never forget it. The sweetest of moments after some of the bitterest that he's tasted here in Melbourne over the course of his career, his sixth Australian Open final. A 13-year wait between the two of them. And he never stopped believing. There's Dad. What a moment for them to share together. The third, third oldest man, of course, in the Open era to win a Grand Slam after Ken Rosewell. Roger Federer, of course. It's just, it's the stuff of dreams. It's the stuff of fantasy, actually. And he is the ultimate dream maker tonight here in Melbourne. Greg Tiley getting the first congratulations tournament director here and it's been a tough couple of years but what a couple of finals days we've had here over this weekend messages from home and there will be messages from everywhere around the globe Wamadika, welcome. What an incredible final. Absolutely remarkable. Would you please put your hands together for these two amazing athletes? Before we present the trophies, though, we need to congratulate a few people for staging this amazing event over the past two weeks. It takes enormous work. A big thank you to everybody at Tennis Australia, the support staff, our sponsors, but most importantly, the players, because what they delivered was extraordinary. Joining us here tonight for the presentation is the Chair of Tennis Australia, Jane Herdlicker, the Tournament Director, Craig Tiley, Tournament Referee, Wayne McEwen, and Chair Umpire, John Blom. Also with us is the Chief Operating Officer for Kia, Mr Damien Meredith. 
There is one more with us also. He is a champion. He's a four-time Grand Slam winner and two times here at the Australian Open, Jim Courier. I'd like now to invite Jane up to say a few words. Well, what a night, what an unbelievable match. Uh, five hours of the most extraordinary tennis. It was anybody's match tonight. And Rafa, you come away with the trophy. Congratulations. Rafa, you gave us all a masterclass tonight in tenacity and grit, and it was impressive. Two sets down and winning your 21st Grand Slam and making history tonight. It's hard to believe that a few months ago you weren't sure you would even be here for the tournament, let alone be here on this court tonight. And you've shown us all the importance of hard work, never giving up on your dreams, and fighting to the absolute finish. You are a phenomenal role model. Every single person in the stands tonight was thinking through the history that you've brought to the game, the extraordinary number of achievements, and wondering whether or not you'd pull off your 21st Grand Slam title, and you did it. And Daniel, you've had the most extraordinary tournament. You have found yourself in tough spots on your way here. You've demonstrated you are never finished, and you were never finished tonight until that very last point. Congratulations on a great tournament. You were clearly determined to beat history in the making for the second time in a row, and that didn't happen tonight. But there's no doubt that we're going to see you back here and that you're on your way to making your own records in the tennis history books. Congratulations. And tonight's not only a um, history-making night. Obviously, last night we had a history-making night on Rod Laver Arena, and it's been 100 years of tennis in Australia. The Australian Championships are 100 years old. One of our greatest champions of all time is here tonight, Rod Laver. Thank you very much for joining us. The legends of our sport laid the foundation that our players tonight are stepping on, and it's so great to have you here, and it's so great to have so many legends here throughout the last two weeks. So thank you very much, and thank you to our sponsors. Without you, we wouldn't be here. Kia, our relationship goes from strength to strength, from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you very much. For the team here, we have 10,000 strong members of our Tennis Australia team and the broader Melbourne Olympic Park team. Every single one of you has a critical role. Every single one of you comes here every day to deliver one of the world's best sporting experiences, and you've done no less of that today. Thank you very much. And the fans, the roof of this stadium would have blown off if it had been closed tonight. You were unbelievable. Well done. <laughs> Melbourne needs a sleep in tomorrow. And for those of you watching around the world, this was a spectacular day of tennis. And we are so thrilled to finish the Australian Open in the way that we have and to encourage everybody to come to Melbourne Park next year and join in on one of the world's best sporting experiences. We'll see you in 2023. I'd like now to invite our umpire from today's match, John Blom, to come up with and to receive a special gift. Jane, if you could present that. Congratulations, John. That was a, a tough gig and you did brilliantly.
Well done, John. I'd like now to invite Damien Meredith from Kia up to say a few words. Thanks very much, Todd. Uh, it's late and I'll be very, very quick. I want to thank the players. They were fantastic tonight. What a great match. Uh, to Tennis Australia, under a lot of difficulty, they put on a fantastic tournament. Uh, this is our 21st year as the major sponsor of the uh, Australian Open. Thank you. It's the same number, same number as uh, how many Grand Slam rappers won. So there's some nice synergy there. And finally, finally, uh, Melbourne, you've done it tough, but you've come out and you've done a magnificent job. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you, Damien, and thank you, Kia, for all of the support. Well, it was an epic match, and unfortunately, there has to be a runner-up. He has entertained us with his unique style of tennis throughout this tournament. Uh, it's a pleasure, because I thought he put up a magnificent effort. Would you please welcome our finalist, Daniil Medvedev. Yeah, uh, tough to talk after 5 hours 30 and uh, losing, but uh, I want to congratulate Rafa because what he did today, I was, uh, I was amazed, like, uh, especially, I mean, during the match I tried, uh, I tried just to play tennis, but after the match I just, you know, asked him, uh, like, are you tired? <laughs> because uh, it was insane. I mean, it, I think the level was very high. You raised your level after two sets for the 21st Grand Slam. I mean, I, I, I thought he was going to get tied, and maybe he did just a little, but still won the match. So you're uh, an amazing champion. I think uh, you guys have a good rivalry still. Uh, it's, uh, it's not over yet, but uh, congrats, and it uh, was unbelievable. And congrats to your team, of course. Then I want to thank two guys in my box. They were, they were here all week, uh, Oli, Gilles. Thanks for uh, sharing this, uh, this tough moment with me. But, uh, you know, we tried our best and uh, hopefully we can have uh, more victories to come. Uh, usually there is my wife in the box, but uh, I think, uh, yeah, probably the TV is broken right now. But, uh, yeah, she's, uh, she's my biggest support. So I want to thank her also. And, of course, uh, my team. My team, Jan, Eric. Carl, Paul, everybody, I, I think I will forget every time someone, but uh, thanks a lot, guys, for being with me. My parents, my sisters, I, I love you all. I mean, uh, if, you, if you are still watching, I <laughs> uh, just, uh, just want to thank you for, for your support, and I'm going to try to be better next time. Um, I want to thank Tennis Australia and especially Craig. I think, uh, you know, uh, Tennis the Tournament Director is a tough job and I think this year was, I don't know, you will tell me if, if it was the toughest uh, in your career, but uh, I think you're an amazing uh, Tournament Director and I hope you stay for uh, at least 15 years that I'm here or maybe 10 years and then, well, then I don't care. <laughs> Last but not least, just wanted to thank my team again. Uh, thank you, guys. Great work, Daniil. Well, just to think that a few months ago he had surgery and was unsure whether he would even be back out playing tennis, let, let alone be here on Rod Laver Arena competing in a major final. His resilience is extraordinary. And today, he achieves something quite unique, a 21st Grand Slam singles title. Our champion for the 2022 Australian Open men's singles, Rafael Nadal.
Well, uh, good evening, everyone. Well, good evening now. Good morning, at least. Uh, well, first of all, I know uh, it's a tough moment. Uh, Daniel, uh, you are an amazing champion. I have been in this position a uh, couple of times in this tournament, having chances to, to have the trophy with me. Uh, but I don't have any doubt that you have this trophy uh, a couple of times in your career because you are amazing. So I want to congratulate you and all your team and family for everything. Yeah, it has been one of the most emotional matches on my tennis career and uh, share the call with you is, is just an honor. So all the best in the, in the future. Well, I even don't know what to say, guys. Uh, <laughs> for me, it's just, uh, it's just amazing. No, be, being honest, uh, one month and a half ago, I didn't know if I will be able to be back on the tour playing tennis again. And today, I am here in front of all of you having this trophy with me. And you really don't know how, how much I fight to be here. I can't thank enough all the support that I received since I arrived here. You are just amazing. Thank you so much for the love and for the support. Yeah, without, without a doubt have been uh, probably one of the most emotional months in my, in my tennis career and uh, having the huge support that I received uh, during the, that three weeks is it's just uh, going to stay in, the, in my heart for the rest of my life. So many, many thanks. Well, I, I honestly can't thank enough uh, all the guys that are, are there, you know, all, all the team, all the family, uh, part of the family that are not here, part of the team that are not here. Just uh, you know how, how hard have been the, the last year and a half and uh, in the low moments uh, you have been there in every single moment to support and uh, without you guys uh, nothing of this will be possible so thank you very much for everything. Well, I don't want to forget uh, anyone, all the volunteers, uh, everybody who made possible this, this amazing event, all the sponsors, uh, Kia, that is my personal sponsor since I started playing tennis. Thank you very much for supporting tennis. <laughs> and for supporting myself in the low and in the good moments. Uh, thanks so much to Tennis Australia. No, uh, have been very tough times to organize tennis tournaments, no, but uh, last two years especially you have been doing an amazing job. Uh, Craig, I know how, how tough it was for you and for all your team, but you are great. You always have been supporting uh, the players and the tennis in general. So I wish you all the very best and can thank you now for all the support that we, we have from you. Well, uh, <laughs> One month and a half, probably, I, I will say that maybe there is a chance that that's going to be my, <laughs> my last Australian Open. But now that's plenty of energy to, to keep going. So thank you very much. I, I, I can't, I really can't explain the feelings that I, I have right now, but I'm going to keep trying my best to keep coming next year. Thank you very, very much. And see you soon. Congratulations once more, Rafa, on a job well done. Well, ladies and gentlemen, obviously that concludes our Australian Open this year. And we hand over now to Roland Garros, which gets underway on May 22nd to June 5th. It's been an amazing weekend, a historic weekend of tennis. Thank you for joining us. There'll be some photos taken, and if Rafa has the energy, he may do a lap of honour. We'll wait and see. Thanks for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again in 2023.
Well, these will be some of the pictures that go around the world. Daniel Medvedev, that was one of the classiest speeches I've ever heard from a runner-up in what were some of the hardest conditions, I'm sure. Two sets to love up, three, two up, and love 40 on Rafa's serve, couldn't find the break, and then broke back at the death and almost looked as though it was going to be his title. But it's a runner-up again for a second year in a row for Medvedev, and it is champion Rafael Nadal for a second time, Brad. Yeah, it's, uh, again, I mean, 21 in the pocket, his second one here to have come back after the surgery, not many matches under his belt, and, and win seven matches here and close this out in the, in the manner that he did to come back from two sets to love down uh, was just awe-inspiring and, uh, and so impressive. Uh, what can you say? Fitz, are you still with us? I'm, I'm still with you, Pitch. I'm, I'm just recovering. Are you <laughs> marinating in the madness of Melbourne? Well, uh, look, I'll never forget this night. You know, I've been to the Australian Open so many years, as you know, and I've sat on the side of the court here and up there with you and uh, commentated here since 1996. It's been a long journey. I've, I've watched with pride to see how this tournament is. Um, evolved over the years and matured and seen the great players in history in recent history that have come through here um, but he's up there with the best isn't he and I thought his little entree there when he started to talk might be well after 21 times you think I'd really know what to say here but he he's, he sort of said um, he was lost for words a bit and and, and you can understand why I, I feel for Medvedev I, I thought he got the raw end of the stick a little bit. I, I know there will be varying opinions on that, but I thought over the two weeks he suffered a little bit at the hands of some of the spectators, and I, I haven't seen that before in Australia, so I, that sort of shook me up a little bit. But the majority, the vast majority of this crowd uh, was so appreciative to both players, and they witnessed something, Pets, this year that was unique. It had never been done before, and we've just seen it. So we all deserve to take a moment, I think, and appreciate what's just happened. But see, it's been an absolute pleasure to work with you for the last uh, four weeks, actually, not just a couple of weeks of the Australian Open, and I certainly wouldn't have wished to be here with anyone else. So it was fantastic, and the same said to you, Brad. It was, uh, it was a wonderful journey. Thanks, Patch and Fitz. It was... Uh... It was an amazing experience, honestly. Yeah, th thank you both. I, I, I really have loved it. it uh, you brought a smile to my face. And, uh, uh, yeah, I hope we can do it again next year because that was as much fun as I've ever had with a microphone in front of my face. Thank you. And that's probably about as much fun as Rafa's had with a trophy in front of his face as well. It was the stuff of dreams, the stuff of fairy tales. Rafael Nadal, Australian Open champion for the second time in his career. Incredible. That's the widest smile, and rightly so. 21 major titles for Rafael Nadal. A massive, massive thank you to him and Daniel Medvedev. And to all the players, Ash Barty, congratulations to her as well. And a final thank you to Tennis Australia and everybody involved, Craig Tiley, Ren, Darren, James, and the entire production team and everyone that's looked after us for the last two to four weeks. It's a special month and it had a special ending. Good night from us here in Melbourne.